El Paso is a front line of the climate crisis. This is a story of our fight, the success, the loss, the lessons. Our electric utility was bought out in 2019, again by Chase Bank. And what this meant is that our utility was now privately owned by this bank, which means that there is no accountability, the community has no feedback, no input. The three major gas plants in El Paso are Newman 6 in the northeast, Montana Vista in the east, and Rio Grande in the west side. Gas from the Permian Basin feeds El Paso Electric through very dangerous pipelines. And it is also the reason why El Paso Electric is not invested in transitioning away from fossil fuels and investing in solar instead. Environmental injustice or any form of injustice is fundamentally a, a power question. And I think who suffers from the pollution is the people without power. My name is Dr. David J. Garcia, and we're in Chaparral, New Mexico. My name is Ida Garcia, and married to Dr. Garcia. This area is the outskirts of Chaparral, and we live about eight-tenths from the plant. And uh, it's directly behind you. If you look back, you can see that smoke settling on the Franklins. It's a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky, but you can see that smog. That comes from the pollution. Well, my name is uh, Rafael Carrasco, and I live out here in Montana Vista. Uh, I've lived here for uh, about 30 years. Where you see those those uh, four turbines, it's El Paso Electric. Uh, it's a local um, monopoly. You might not see what it's emitting, but if you use you know special technology, you'll see exactly what it's emitting. You know, we're going to be breathing all these chemicals. It's an imbalance in how they target where they put these power plants. They wouldn't build a power plant close to maybe Coronado or Franklin in these areas, or maybe even by the country club. I don't think they'll ever build a power plant there. I don't know, I think I made a mistake with bringing my wife here, <laughs> honestly. The organization Sunrise El Paso was founded in 2019 to address the climate crisis. We protested the electric utility gas plants and the refinery. In 2021, alongside the Chaparral community, we launched a campaign to prevent further pollution at the Newman gas plant. The fight resulted in a legal settlement which won tangible concessions like emissions reductions and settlement funds for the community. Some of these funds were used to begin the project of the El Paso Climate Charter. For those of you who do not know, the Climate Charter Policy was intended to transform our city government and to legally committing to implementing climate justice. This policy would have implemented a climate department tasked with um, transitioning our city to a sustainable, renewable future, right? And this policy um, was a charter amendment rather than an ordinance. With support from lawyer Mike Siegel, Sunrise El Paso drafted this robust climate action plan. It consisted of 15 sections focusing on a wide variety of policy areas. It made solar energy more affordable, forced polluters to track their emissions, mandated a climate mitigation plan, mandated the city to create green climate job programs, increased the municipal government's oversight on Paso Electric, and more. It threatened power directly. It was incredibly ambitious. To get the policy on the ballot, we had to collect thousands and thousands of signatures. I collected signatures at um uh, farmers markets, uh, or even like the little plaza businesses. I, you know, I would go to each and every business and talk to the employees, talk to the to the people in parking lots. The first people I went to when I had to collect signatures was my family. You know, my mom and my sister. It's a really beautiful experience to introduce justice to them, to tell my family, to tell my mom, you can create something even better than this. You don't have to settle. Ultimately, we turned in 39,156 signatures to the city clerk. It just felt surreal to see something that had come from our heads or from our brains that just a year prior was just an idea to not see it named in people's minds and people's ballots. 
the Prop K Pachanga was like the first thing to get people involved. So we had officially got it on the ballot. It was the first thing where it was like, now this is what we have to do. So it was a kickoff and, and volunteer onboarding event to get people moving and, and part of the campaign. We were reaching people through every avenue possible. We were knocking on their doors. We were taking clipboards out to bars and restaurants. We were standing outside of churches. We were mobilized every single day. We texted every single person in our contacts. It was a massive operation. It tells a lot about where we were going and what we were trying to do by who, which enemies we made. So who exactly were these people? We broke it down into this coalition of the polluting elite. So this is special interests, lobbying organizations. This is political action committees. Uh, this is politicians, El Paso Electric, the actual utility company's lobbyists, uh, and then real estate developers. So see that these are the big people who came out and spent against it. And the two biggest ones were El Pasoans for Prosperity and Consumer Energy Alliance. And between the two of them, this is how much money they spent. 1.2 million. This is the kind of spending you see in congressional races. This is the kind of spending you see like on huge November races. They spent this much money in a special election on a Saturday in May. The opponents of Prop K included El Paso Electric, Marathon Petroleum, Paul Foster's Finance Management Company, the Koch Brothers Libra Initiative, the Consumer Energy Alliance PAC, which consists of multinational mega companies like Shell, ExxonMobil, BP, Chevron, and more. The El Paso Chamber of Commerce launched a disinformation campaign that completely distorted the policy of the Climate Charter. They produced a, quote, economic impact assessment, which claimed the charter would cause half of all jobs in El Paso to vanish by 2030. This report was eventually debunked by energy experts, but nonetheless, the opposition pushed with their messaging. There was doors that we would knock on that had like five mailers in their mail, like people who hadn't been home in a while. So you could see five anti-Prop K mailers in their mailbox two on their door, billboards they, when you're driving on the freeway, radio ads. There was politicians out like giving stump speeches against it. So it was like, before we even got to talk to someone, they might have heard 10 negative things about the climate charter. There are forces that will go to that extent and that will spend that amount of money to harm a community that I love so much. Harm people that I love and to harm me. You know, I felt personally attacked by that. The results came in. Proposition K was voted down through a result of 9,209 people who voted for Proposition K and 40,767 who voted against it, who voted no for Proposition K. I felt really heartbroken because I saw a group of young people pour their whole heart and soul into something, and not just something, to pour their whole heart and soul into like improving our community, improving our lives, doing something good. The Climate Charter was about hope for, for the future, and all of that got lost in the messaging, and I just... That was the story. The story was a group of young organizers fighting for their lives. <laughs> and I don't know how it turned into something else. After the election, we were devastated. We squared off with the most powerful corporations on the planet and lost. But we learned valuable, important lessons. These lessons led us to transform into a Manasseh People's Project. We began to focus on building power through organized people and organized money. We launched a dues-paying membership system and opened up the organization to become multi-generational. Today, Amanaset consists of over 160 dues-paying members. To the disappointment of the polluting elite coalition which fought the climate charter, we are still here. More powerful, more serious, more determined. And we're just getting started.